Up until 1967, making cars in the U.S. was a bit of the Wild West. Strong, hot-blooded. Safety was only loosely regulated. Cars were largely designed for style. Drive your Chevrolet through the USA. Then along comes Ralph Nader. His book, Unsafe at Any Speed, started a national dialogue about auto safety. Congress held hearings, and on March 1, 1967, the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards took effect. A vast Bible of safety regulations that all new cars must conform to if they're going to be legal for sale in the U.S. For example, just consider the lowly safety belt, the first thing the FMVSS mandated back in 67. It says that this device must have no burrs or sharp edges on its hardware, have only one way to latch it. The belt can be no less than 46 millimeters wide. It must adjust to fit a 5th percentile female all the way up to a 95th percentile male, have between 5 and 6,000 pounds of braking force, have its cut ends treated not to fray, resist UV light and microorganisms, and have the belt's maker, model, manufacturer date, and overseas importer permanently inscribed on it. And that's just a summary for a belt. Regulations cover just about every part of a car involved in crash avoidance, crash worthiness, and post-crash survivability. From bumpers to lights, shifters to doors, mirrors to buttons, brakes to display panels. But if you really want to see the effects of the FMVSS, just look at a graph. As the miles we drive in the U.S. have soared, the deaths per mile driven have plummeted. The expectation of automotive safety has radically changed since March of 67, and car makers know it pays to double check that every bit of their designs conform to the FMVSS. More realities of modern driving revealed now at CNETOnCars.com. Click on Smarter Driver.